It's written from within the prison. The heart. Have you found the heart? And realizing at once that none of them had found it, they continued their way along the corridor, tapping and listening to the mirrors. They advanced slowly, cupping their ears and often flattening them against the wall. It was the executioner who first heard the beats. They quickened their pace. They were now so frightened that they sped along the elastic ground in leaps and bounds of several yards. They were breathing hard and talking to themselves without a stop, as one does in dreams, that is, so softly and indistinctly that the words merely ruffle the silence. The beats were nearer and louder. Finally, the four men came to a mirror on which was drawn, obviously carved with the diamond of a ring, a heart pierced by an arrow. No doubt it was the portal of the heart. I don't know what gesture the executioner made, but it made the heart open, and we entered the first chamber. It was bare, white, and cold, without an aperture. Alone in the midst of that emptiness, upright on a wooden block, stood a young drummer of 16. His impassive face looked at nothing in the world. His supple hands were beating the drums. The drumsticks rose and fell sharply and neatly. They were beating out the prisoner's highest life. Did he see us? Did he see the open, profaned heart, the man condemned to death? How could we not be seized with panic? And that chamber was only the first. The mystery of the hidden chamber remained to be discovered. But no sooner did one of the four realize that they were not in the heart of the heart, that a door opened by itself, and we saw before us a red rose of monstrous size and beauty. The mystic rose, murmured the chaplain. The four men were staggered by the splendor. The ways and rays of the rose dazzled them at first, but they quickly, quickly pulled themselves together, for such people never permit themselves to show signs of respect. Recovering from their agitation, they rushed in, pushing back the petals and crumbling them with their drunken hands as a lecher who has been deprived of sex pushes back a whore's skirt. They were in the throes of drunken profanity. When their temples, their temples throbbing and their brows beaded with sweat, they reached the heart of the rose. It was a kind of dark well at the edge of this pit, which was so murky. It was as murky and deep as an eye. They leaned forward and were seized with a kind of dizziness. All four made the gesture of people losing their balance, and they dropped and they toppled into that deep, murky gaze.